this ESPC space when you were utilizing conventional imaging? What is your approach, especially after the Embark study with the use of enzalutamide in biochemical recurrent disease? Alan, yeah. your approach. Biochemical recurrent disease. As an oncologist, we know these patients are metastatic. For biochemical recurrence post prostatectomy, if the patient has a PSA less than one, there is still the opportunity for curative intent with radiation. That's the first thing to remember. We should not be skipping salvage radiation therapy just because we have the Embark data or anything else. When the PSA is greater than one, the likelihood of it being localized to the prostate bed drops off very sharply. It's less than 10% as the PSA goes from one to two to five. So really, if you're going to do salvage radiation, the thing is to do it early before the PSA hits one. Above that, we generally don't. Because it's a difference between cure and not cure. Absolutely. For biochemically recurrent disease, no metastases by conventional imaging. If we say no metastases by conventional imaging, the majority of men with BCR still die of something other than prostate cancer. It's a development of metastatic disease that really changes that statement. The metastatic patients, 80-90% of them, die of prostate cancer. In the non-metastatic space, I see these patients routinely, and the first thing I'm doing is talking them down from the ledge, saying, this is probably not going to get you. Most of these men I don't have to treat with systemic therapy. I use PSA doubling time as my absolute metric for when do we even talk about systemic therapy. Now, I don't consider it until the doubling time is less than about nine months, okay? You know, eight to 10, something in that range is, is where we talk about it. And for reference, you know, you can go back to the old Hopkins data. If the doubling time is three months or faster, then the likelihood of metastasis is about 50% at three years. If the doubling time is two years or longer, then the likelihood of metastasis is only 10% at 10 years. Mm -hmm. At 10% at 10 years, you take those odds and you run with them. I'll take it. <laughs> so I tell patients that, and almost invariably, when I see these patients, at the end of the appointment, they go, I feel so much better, right? I check PSA at most every three months, generally every six months in these men. Now, <laughs> if the doubling time is fast and we have to talk about treatment, that's when all the different options come into play, whether it's enzalutamide monotherapy, LHRH therapy, whether agonist or antagonist. Absolutely, it should be intermittent therapy, not continuous. At most, I'm treating a man for 12 months just to suppress his PSA and we stop. Typically, he's going to go at least two years until I have to treat him again. I'm telling him this up front, like this is a long-term process. Nothing's happening quickly, right? So with Embark, you've got the option of enzymonotherapy, entirely appropriate. You still have the option of LHRH therapy, whether, you know, you want to do, a, you know, an injection, whether you want to do oral therapy with relagolics, all achieving the same outcome, right? You're almost assuredly going to get a PSA of zero. Almost never do you have castration resistance at this point. Treat the patient for nine to 12 months and stop. That on and off cycle typically can treat a man for seven to nine years before we have to escalate therapy. And that's what I'm telling them up front. So this, turn down the temperature, let them relax. <laughs> I tell them PSA stands for prostate specific anxiety, and we got to get rid of that last. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And again, I think the biggest struggle has been just even what we can appreciate so far from our discussion is over treating in early disease, and then we'll jump into under treating in metastatic yes. or progressive disease. Yes, absolutely. I think that second point is, is one of the biggest issues in prostate cancer management today in the United States. If we look at the real world data, the two big gaps in management today are number one, too many men getting ADT monotherapy for MHSPC or MCSPC. We have nine positive clinical trials of combination therapy in the first line setting for hormone yep. sensitive disease combination therapy is what patients should be getting, right? In my practice, the only men who get ADT monotherapy in that setting are the men in whom their life expectancy from other causes is already limited to only a couple of years. And all I'm trying to do is palliate their prostate cancer pain. 
Ejection fraction is 20%. This gentleman, he's got bone pain. I'm just trying to suppress that fine right. Lupron alone. Okay. But other than that, every other man should be on combination. And the only conversation is around which combination. Right. 